On the Alamas Models page, we can see many AI models. Let us go to Embedding Gamma Model. It is a relative new embedding model created by Google. It is small size with only 622 megabytes, which can even run on mobile phones. The Embedding Gamma Model produces vector representations of text, making it well-suited for search and retrieval tasks, including classification, clustering, and semantic similarity search. Its training components include web and code documents, as well as synthetic and task-specific data, enabling it to handle a wide variety of different tasks and data formats. Back on the top, we can click the icon to make a copy of this command. On a terminal, we paste the command. Alama will install the embedding gamma on the local computer. It starts the polling. After it finishes the installation, we can see the 100% completion. At the end, we see the success, indicating the embedding model has been successfully installed. On the Alamas Models page, we go to the Gemma model. As we can see, it has different sizes. You may pick one for your application. For example, we can click on the Gemma 3.1b model. On this page, we click the icon to make a copy of the command. If you want to read more, you can scroll down the page and read other information regarding to this model. We need to copy the command to install this model. On a terminal, we paste the command. After pressing the Enter key, we can see Alama installing the model on the computer. After it finishes, we can use the model. We will install Docker on local computer. We go to Docker website. We hover over the button to download Docker Desktop. You may select Mac or Window. I choose Download for Linux. On this page, we can see the requirement. You can check if your platform is supported. For example, if we want to see if the KVM modules are enabled, we can run the commands in a terminal. Here are the results I have obtained on my computer after running the commands. I have the KVM modules enabled. After this, I am going to select this to install it on Ubuntu. Again, you need to check the prerequisites. We will use the commands shown on this page to install, launch and update Docker Desktop. Back to the terminal, we go to the Downloads folder. Then, we create a file, install underscore docker.sh. We show the files in the folder. We then show this install underscore docker file. Next, we use this command to add executable permission to this file, allowing it to be run as a script. We check again to make sure it has the executable permission. Finally, we open this file by a default program. Next, we check if the GNOME terminal is enabled. We make a copy of this command. On the terminal, we paste the command. It shows the information indicating the GNOME terminal is enabled. In the step 1, we open this link in a new window. In the Setup Docker's apt repository, we make a copy of the command. On the opened file, we paste the commands and save the file. Back to the terminal, we run all the commands saved in this file. It finishes all the commands and set up the Docker repository. Until now, we have finished the first step. In the next step, we need to click the link to download the DEB package. After the download finishes, we are in the third step to install the package using Apartment. We make copy of the commands. Back to the terminal, we run the command to update Apartment. Next, we run the command to install Docker Desktop. After it finishes the installation, we can go to the apps and click on the Docker desktop icon. We click to accept the terms. You can enter your work or personal email address. Here, I click to skip. Now, we see this window, indicating the Docker installation has been successful. We do not have any images so far. Back to the terminal, we can check the version of Docker. Next, we run Hello World to pull the image from the library. We can see hello from Docker, which is good. On the Docker desktop, we can see the new container of Hello World. On the images, we can also see the new Hello World image. When you are here, your Docker has installed and run successfully. In the following, we will install Pdrant Vector Store using Docker. On the terminal, we enter this command, docker pull Pdrant. Docker will download and extract packages. When pull is complete, we make a new directory 
Drant underscore storage work Drant will store its data. Then, we enter this command to run the Drant container, mapping the ports and volumes. We see the Drant version number and the URL of the web UI. We can make a copy of the URL. We open it on a browser. When we see the Welcome to Drant page, it means that the Drant has been installed and runs smoothly. The Drant Vector Store is ready to use. Next, we will create a workflow on N8N so that we can load PDF files and store the data in the Drant database. We are going to add a form. In the search, we enter form. We click the N8N form icon. We select the trigger on N8N new form event. In the parameter settings, we enter the title of the form. We then add a form element. We add the field name add PDF files. In the element type, we select file. We may turn on the multiple files to allow more than one PDF file to be uploaded. In the accepted file type, we enter .pdf. This field should be a required field. Back on the canvas, we see the form node has been added. We click the plus sign. In the search, we enter Drant. Then, we select the Drant Vector Store. We click on the icon of Add Documents to Vector Store. In the settings, we need to create a credential. We do not need an API key. We only need to enter the Drant URL. Let us go to the browser and make a copy of the highlighted part of the URL. On the N8N settings, we paste the URL on the box. We click the Save button. It shows connection tested successfully. This is good. In the operation mode, we choose Insert Documents. In the Drant collection, we choose by ID and enter the ID, Drant underscore database. Back on the canvas, we are going to add an embedding model. In the list, we select the Embeddings Alama icon. In the settings, we choose an Alama account. If you do not have one, you can create new credential. In the model list, we choose the embedding gamma lastest model. Back on the canvas, we will add a document loader. We click on the plus sign. In the list, we choose the default data loader. In the settings, for the type of data, we choose binary. For other parameters, we can use the default values. Here, I have a PDF file with information of a flower shop. It has the business hours, location, products and services, return policy, and contact information. We will upload the data to the Drant Vector Store. On the N8N canvas, we click the Save button to save the workflow. Then, we click the button to execute the workflow. A form has been popped up. We click to choose file. We select the Flower Shop Info PDF file. After that, we click the Submit button. As we can see, the workflow is running to load the PDF file and save the data to the Drant Vector Store. After it finishes, we see all the nodes turned green. The workflow executed successfully. Let us go to the Drant web page. We click the Collections icon. On the Collections page, we see the name of the collection we entered in the N8N workflow. The status is green. It has two segments. We can click on the name to see the data. On this page, we see the data has been loaded and is ready to use. We will use it in our AI agent REG chatbot. On the N8N canvas, we will create a new workflow with an AI agent in an REG chatbot to utilize the Drant database. In the new workflow, we click the plus sign to add an AI agent. In the search, we enter agent. We click the AI agent icon. In the parameters, we can use all the default values. Back to the canvas, we see the AI agent node as well as a chat node that have been automatically added. On the AI agent node, we will add a chat model. We click the plus sign. In the search, we enter Alama. We select the Alama chat model. In the parameters, we use the saved Alama account credential. In the model list, we choose Gemma 3 colon 1B. After this, we go back to the canvas. For the memory, we can click the plus. We can just add this simple memory, which should serve our purpose. We use the default values for the parameters. We will add a Drant database tool to the AI agent. In the search, we enter Drant. We click on the Drant vector store icon. 
In the parameters, we use the saved grant account credential. The operation mode is to retrieve documents as tool for AI agent. The grant collection is selected by ID. We enter the ID of grant underscore database. For the rest of parameters, we can use their default values. Back to the canvas, the next step is to add the embedding to the grant vector store. In the list, we choose the embeddings Alama. Again, we use the saved Alama account credential. In the model list, we choose the embedding gamma latest model. On the canvas, we see a warning. It says parameter description is required. Let us click the node and fix it. On the description box, we enter retrieve data from the grant database. After we enter the question, when is the flower shop open on Tuesday, we have an error showing Gemma 3 does not support tools. We will fix this. We click the AI agent node. In the option, we click to add a system message. The message says you are a helpful assistant. Please use the Grant Vector Store tool to answer the user question. On the canvas, we click on the chat model node. In the model list, we choose the Llama 3.2 model, which should support tools. We go back to the canvas. In the chat window, we enter the question, when is the flower shop open on Monday? The workflow starts running. We can see the Grant Vector Store node running. This means the RAG chatbot is fetching data from the database to answer the question. That is it. If you like this video, please subscribe and give a thumbs up. If you have any comments and suggestions, please let us know. Thank you for your support.